Okay, I'm going to teach you how to divide big numbers by big numbers, ultimately. So let's just start with a small, easy example. So if you've got this fraction here, 48 divided by 4, well, the only way to do that without a calculator, or without guessing, or without using your head, we have to use uh, the bus stop method, which is I'll demonstrate now. It's, uh, it's done by um, this sort of operation. We divide the 4 into the 48. Now, this is a really easy example. So we say, how many 4s go into 4? Well, that's, that's 1 because 4 divided by 4 is 1, really easy. There's no remainder, but we've put the remainder here in any example. So now it's the same question. How many 4s go into, well, it's a different number this time, but it's still, how many 4s go into 8? Well, that's 2. So we put the answer at the top here, and the remainder is 0. There's nothing to add the remainder to. We finished. It's 12. Now, I know that's a really easy example. You probably already knew that. But yeah, 48 divided by 4 is 12. So we just apply that same sort of idea to a, a maybe a slightly harder example. So I've got a much bigger number now on the, on the top and still the same sort of small number. So again, how many fours go into 4,028? Well, without using the calculator, I mean, that's the quickest way, but we haven't got that and we're not allowed to do that. So we have to do, again, the bus stop method. Now, it's exactly the same fashion. We still have to just go along the number and divide the four into each of the you know, individual digits. So how many fours go into four? Well, that's one. Again, carry the zero. So that's how many fours go into zero. And now it's zero, zero, which is still zero. You still read this number as zero, even though, you know, it looks slightly different. So how many fours go into zero? Well, that's zero. And there's no remainder once again. Okay, still same question. How many fours go into, well, this number's two. So you read the remainder and the number next to each other. So this this is really saying how many fours go into zero two. Well, zero two equals two. So how many fours go into two? That's zero. And the remainder is two. And that carries on again. Lastly, it is how many fours go into 28? Well, that's seven. Hopefully you know that from your times tables. Is there a remainder? And how do you know there's no remainder? Sorry, I've told you there's no remainder. No, there isn't a remainder. But we know there's no remainder because you do the subtraction of this number times by this number. So 4 times 7 is 28, so it's 28 divided minus 28, and that's 0. So there's no remainder. This is our final answer because we've got no numbers left. So that's 1,007 as the final answer. Okay, so that was pretty easy, really. Um, really, you could do any sort of big number divided by a small number if you just carry on with the same method. Okay, next question. A much bigger number. Now, we've got a huge number divided by quite a big number on the bottom. And this, this, this kind of works in the same way. The only difference is we might not know our, our 56 times tables like we do our four times tables. So the quickest way to do it, even though it is a bit, um, uh, a bit slow and a bit methodical, is you, you just have to work the 56 times table out. So we'll do this on the right hand side here. So 56, my hand's going to cover it, but you know, you can read it after I finish. So we have to just add 56 every time. So if you're not okay with doing that in your head, I don't think many people would be. So you have to do it in a column addition every time. So 6 plus 6 is 12, carry the 1. 5 plus 5 is 10, add the 1, it's 112. So we put this in. Okay. And then you keep going and fill up this um, fill up this times table. And it is slow. There's, there's nothing you can do. you just got to put the work in. So I'm going to just finish off this in my head. So 56 out of 112 is 168. And I do that again. 56 out of 168 is 224. 56 out of 224 is 280. Um, I'm going to stop at the fifth number. If I need if I need another number, okay, I'll carry on and work it out later on. But I think normally it's a good idea just to go halfway. You don't have to go any further than the ninth number because, well, you just don't, trust me. So, uh, 50,120 divided by 56. Again, we just do this with the same method. 50, 1, 2, oh, this is called the bus stop method. Uh, most girls call it that. Maybe your school doesn't. So how many 56s go into 5? It's the same method we just did. Well, that's 0 because 5 is so small. We're not going to get any 56s out of it. Carry the 5. How many 56s go into 50? Read that number there underlined. Well, that's still 0. So we carry on the um, uh, the remainder. Okay, so now it's 5. How many 56s go into 501? Now, this number is not even close to big enough, so I should have maybe carried on, but I, I trust me that it's best to just do 5. I'm going to carry on with the 6th uh, times table. So this is 6 times 56, and that's how I do that by adding 56 to the 5 times 56. So 56 add um, 280 is uh, 336. 
and I'm going to keep going. Seven times thirty-six, uh, fifty-six is um, uh, three hundred and ninety-two, and I'm going to add fifty-six on again to the eighth times table. Um, well, that's four hundred and forty-eight. Okay, and the ninth one is um, hmm, what's that? Five hundred and can't quite write this on here. 504. Okay, now if you add 56 once again, that will give you 560, which is 10 times 56. This is quite clearly 10 times 56. So, um, as I said, we don't really need the 10th the times table, but we know that these numbers are right because we would have got to the 10th one. So, now we're still, we're still back up to the original question. How many 56s go into 501? Well, it's 9 is too big because 504 is too big, so it has to be 8. So we put 8 up here, and we still have to do the remainder. It's still the remainder just like the other numbers. The, the only difference is that, um, well, we can't quite do that on our heads. So we have to do 501, take away um, 448. So we do that with a column subtraction. Now, if you did long division, they'd do this here. And that's why it gets so messy, and it really isn't, doesn't, yeah, long division isn't any different than just doing this column subtraction in a separate bit of paper. And, yeah. Just don't get scared by long division. Lots of people do. So I'm going to do this column subtraction. Hopefully you know how to do this and I'm not doing something too hard for you. But I'm going to carry the 1 over and then um, carry the 1 over once again. Make this 9. So 11 minus 8 is 3. Um, uh, 9 minus 4 is 5. 4 minus 4 is 0. So I have to add the fifth put the remainder 53 onto the 2. So it's kind of small this, but I'll just stick this in here. So 5, 3, 2. So I'm still saying how many 56s go into this number. Now that's 5, 3, 2. Let me just make a bit of space for myself. So how many 56s go into 5, 3, 2? Well, I look at our times tables that we've just worked out, and I realize it's the ninth one. So, okay, so that's 5, 0, 4. So I put the 9 here, and then I've still got a column subtraction to do. Because... I've got a remainder. So it's 532, which is this number here, take away our ninth time table, which is 504. So our remainder is, uh, okay, 2 minus 4, can do. Let's take this this one here, make this 12. 12 minus 4 is 8, great. 2 minus 0 is 2, 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay, so we put the remainder in here, which was 28. So now we've got our last number, 280. How many fixed 56s go into 280? Well, that is, uh, let's look at our times table. Oh, luckily it's five, and there's no remainder, because that's the right number. Um, so yeah, our answer is 895. Now, um, I should probably talk about decimals for a moment, um, because maybe you're not quite sure what to do with these, and that's okay. So um, you can apply what I've just told you to any sets of numbers now. You can use a big, huge number, and you can do any big number divided by maybe a small number, maybe another big number. You can really do anything with that, with that knowledge. So you just watch that video over and over and over again until it makes sense to you. Now lastly, you might want to know how, what happens when, when I get to the, 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 the last number and I've got a remainder. Well, I'll show you. So you might have to do 15 divided by 4. Now I know from my 4 times table that 15 isn't in the 4 times table. So um, I actually, I know already that I'm going to end up with a decimal place. So I'm going to show you how this works. So 15 divided by 4, again we just do it with bus stop method. There is no other way. It's just a bit tedious and it's long-winded, but you know, you got to put the effort in. So how many 4s go into 1? Well, that's 0. How many 4s go into 15? Uh, okay, that's 3. And I've got a remainder of 3. So where do I put this remainder of 3? Well, I have to put it in on something. I'm going to put it on the 0 that's already there. I'm going to make that um, 30. Now hopefully you know that 15.0 is the same as 15. These numbers equal each other. Um, this point zero isn't 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 really doesn't mean anything, but it'll always be there, as will the next zero, as will the next zero, as will forever. So you've always got loads of zeros to use, and and you'll use as many zeros as you need to until you end up with um, no remainder left. So how many fours go into thirty? Well, um, this is this is this is how many is that? That's seven, and our remainder is two. Now, again, I put this two on the zero. So there's another thing to mention here. The dot decimal place, like it's in the um, question, it's going to be in the answer too, and it's in the same space that it uh, it matches. You know, it's in the same line, it's in the same column. 
So don't forget to put that in, otherwise you'll read 37 instead of 3.7. I'm not finished yet, but I'm almost there. So how many food fours go into 20? Well, that is, that's five. Looking at our times table, I didn't quite finish off. So yeah, no remainder left. So we finished with the final answer of 3.75. Right, hopefully that's um, okay with you. Um, I, I could explain about recurring decimals, but maybe in another video. And um, there's a lot of information in this video. Uh, let me know if that helps. And, and yeah, see you later.